that's a problem. And so we don't want to allow even these repeat petty thefts of less than $250, these repeat shopliftings. That is addressed by SB 54. So if you are a repeat, even repeat shoplifter, we've reinstated the prospect of jail time. Um, if you steal something that is worth more than $250, even on your first theft, we have imposed active jail time zero to 30 days. So this issue of repeat thefts is already being addressed in this bill. And what this amendment does is says, um, if it's your first time shoplifting, you should also go to jail. And, uh, and you know, for a 19-year-old, for a 20-year-old, look, we don't want repeat thefts happening. That's been a problem. This bill addresses that. I don't know that, uh, that for something that's really shoplifting, for the first time, you should throw somebody in jail. Um, uh, for Certainly, if they repeat it, you should, and this bill addresses that. Thank you. Uh, Representative Ortiz and then Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. Question for the sponsor. When you say that um, the purpose of this is to, quote, get a prior person with a prior drug conviction into the system, do you mean getting them, making them better able to get access to treatment? Um, and do you think that under the current system, someone who has a prior drug or has a drug conviction doesn't have access to, the, to treatment? Is that your purpose, is to get access to treatment when you say get them into the system? Yeah, it's in the purpose Yeah, I think, you know, if we, if the first offense is a violation, you get a ticket for it. So if your first offense and you've got a drug issue is a catch and release sort of scenario, um, uh, the prosecutors don't even have a, or a, a, they don't even have a tool to which to use to encourage someone to try to get help. Um, you know, five days of active imprisonment, it's up to five days of active imprisonment. They can also say, you know, there's, go get treatment and you may not spend time in prison. But we don't have that option. If we just release them and give them a ticket on that first case uh, scenario. So it just moves us to that second, uh, that second level, that second theft. Uh, mind you, uh, to answer the, uh, one of the issues earlier, we're not talking about someone that this truly is just the first time that they've stolen and they've never had any issues, that, that they're, they've, they've been straight all their life. We're referring to people who have been convicted. And, and, and mind you, not everyone that has drug issues have been convicted of a drug crime. These people have actually been through the system in some capacity, and they've had some sort of conviction. So it's not their first offense at anything. Uh, it, it just happens to be their first theft offense. So we want, I want to make sure that we give our prosecutors that tool instead of the catch and relief, it's a release uh, issue. And, and, and I'm sorry, that's more of a, I'm not using that term. Uh, that, I know that's been used a lot in this, this uh, situation, and I'm, I'm not trying to stoke frustration, but I guess the idea would be we've, we've, we've come across that individual, we've allowed them to go, and we haven't given, us, we haven't given our prosecutors the, the opportunity to offer them the help that they need because they don't have that stick in, or that, that tool in their tool belt uh, to be able to kind of say, work with us, or you might spend some time in prison. <laughs> Okay. Representative uh, Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can we have Mr. Skidmore, because I'm, I'm not reading this amendment in the same way that it's being explained, and I just want to make, because I'm reading a sentence of, of more than five days, not that they, I'm reading that you have to give them five days of active imprisonment. And maybe it's just another one of those where we're giving more um, help to the prosecutors than they could do what they, they feel they need to. Mr. Skidmore, if you could put yourself on the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, my name is John Skidmore. I'm the director for the criminal division for the state of Alaska Department of Law. I can answer that question if she needs. Uh, Representative Pruitt. I, I can actually answer that question. If you go back and you read, you actually read L, you'll actually, it says may not impose a sentence of more. So it, five is the cap, five is the top. So I think that's the question that she was asking. You have to go back and, and just read um, 
uh, the uh, paragraph from which it's it's under in, in the first line. You, Mr. But, Chairman. You, uh, uh, Mr. But it, it still doesn't talk, in my opinion, it still doesn't talk about just those with drugs. I mean, it talks about those who are shoplifting and could be for any purpose, not just, just, I just want to make sure, I mean, we heard a lot about 91. These are first times that we've seen the amendments. And I just want to make sure that our interpretation is their interpretation because we're not the ones who are going to take people to court. They are. And whether or not this is a tool that will make things better, because I, I know in my district, shoplifting is huge. And um, I don't want to see the, and I don't care what purpose they're doing it, whether they're on drugs or not drugs, but I just want to make sure that what this, how this amendment fits into what we have and whether or not it's a tool that would be useful for the Department of Law. Representative Pruitt. And, and, uh, and I can definitely let Mr. Skidmore, but to answer your question, uh, as you read the amendment, you'll see that um, B, uh, underneath there, references, those statutes reference um, uh, prior convictions of, sub, of controlled substances. Um, so uh, the, the difference between, li between paragraph 3 and the, its, its counterpart, which is the current paragraph 3 in the, uh, in the, in the uh, bill, uh, the difference is that instead of ending at uh, the end of A here, B clarifies that and you've also been convicted previously. So that's the, the and is the portion that allows, uh, that, that addresses the concern that I think you were addressing, which is the how, how, do, you, how do you know that it's about drug offenses? Um, it's it's, it's the, uh, the additional paragraph that's there. But I, I, Mr., I'll let Mr. Skidmore also Mr. speak Chairman. to him. Representative Wilson. Again, I'm waiting for my law degree to come, and it hasn't yet, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, and, and I just feel like there's a, and I, and I don't not believe what um, Representative Pruitt's saying, so this is not anything on, on him, but this is a, one that's a little bit more complicated, and, and maybe just doing for just drugs is not enough. I mean, if people are repeating for whatever reason, I mean, we all know that that's an issue of going around and, and just basically getting a violation and it's not stopping people from taking, 250 doesn't sound like much, but they do it enough. We all pay at the grocery store, we all pay at the stores. So I just, you know, want to make sure that we're doing what we think we're doing. Uh, Mr. Skidmore, if you could put yourself on the record. Again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. This is John Skidmore, the director of the Criminal Division for the State of Alaska Department of Law. Through the chair, um, Representative Wilson, the answer to your question is um, amendment number six that you have in front of you would create additional judicial discretion when an individual has previously been convicted of a drug offense, has not previously been convicted of any theft offenses. Um, that's specifically what the amendment does. I think that's the first half of your question. The second half, or perhaps the second question is, is that a tool for prosecutors? Okay, I see you nodding your head, yes. So the way I would respond to that is, I can't tell you when a person commits a theft merely because they've had a prior drug conviction that this theft now that they're committing is related to that prior drug offense or not. I understand the logic that Representative Pruitt's using. Um, I would tell you that I find it intriguing. It's not a concept that uh, the folks at the criminal division have contemplated in terms of this sort of statutory structure. Um, I, I would tell you that um, the position of the Department of Law is that this sort of thing is probably best referred to the commission so that they can review it, um, so that various stakeholders can come together and analyze whether or not that structure makes sense or not. Um, but ultimately, the, the legal answer of what it does is it says that a court may have greater discretion in the sentence they impose, zero to five days, if they have not previously been convicted of a theft offense, but they were previously convicted of a drug offense. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Uh, and that's why I recommend that the commission have an opportunity to evaluate that. But that's technically what the amendment does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was very helpful. Thank you, Representative Wilson. Uh, next question goes to Representative uh, Grimm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. Uh, and, and Mr. Skidmore, since you're here, if um, looking in that section, we. We're rolling back some of what 91 did in these sentencings in 54. Through the chair representative Graham, that's correct. So this kind of takes it an additional step 
through the chair, Representative Graham, that would be correct. Thank you. Representative Garrett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Skidmore, just, uh, I don't know the answer to this. Um, so let's say somebody shows up and they shoplift um, at Fred Meyers, because that's, <laughs> I could use that as an example. Um, so this is, this is a crime that applies to stealing something worth less than $250, um, not hurting somebody, not breaking into a house, but just stealing something. And um, but if they were high on drugs, I mean, I know there's a public intoxication statute, but if you're high on drugs when you do that, is that a separate crime or is that not a separate crime? Through the chair, Representative Guerra, that is not a separate crime. In the state of Alaska, when we talk about possessing a drug, you have to possess it outside of your body, so not in your bloodstream. That's not going to count as possession. Um, it would actually have to be that the person has in their hand, on their body, in some other way, physically possessing that controlled substance, not after they've consumed it. Now, if they both have it on their person and it's in their system, that might be further evidence of their possession, but you cannot charge somebody with possession merely because they are under the influence. Representative Garrett. I, I guess so with that, I think I would be more sympathetic to this amendment if it applied to prior drug dealers, uh, prior drug dealing. Um, somebody who has in the past uh, made a mistake and, well, used pot possibly applies this, this bill would apply to, or this amendment would apply to, but if you uh, used drugs, didn't deal them, you got a sentence back then. It probably involved uh, probation. It probably involved rehab. And now we're punishing them again for something they've already been punished for. Um, I would be more sympathetic if, um, if this applied to somebody who had prior, their, drug, their prior drug offense was a drug dealing offense. That, that, would, uh, that you don't really rehab very well, as opposed to somebody who uh, maybe has used uh, a couple times. Okay. Uh, we've got a question from Representative Seaton. <coughs> um, are we just asking questions at this point, Mr. Chair? Or uh, is this under discussion? Uh, discussion or questions. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I guess um, under discussion, I, I have a somewhat of a problem because we're trying to set up a system of, di of proportional sentencing and what we're doing is taking away that proportional sentencing. Uh, we had testimony uh, earlier that the average um, shoplifting uh, crime uh, was $50 or less and this amendment seems to say that if you've been convicted convicted of uh, a drug offense in any other jurisdiction, that's going to apply to the Alaska jurisdiction. And on here, we're now going to have active jail sentence up to five days. I think that even on the um, previous drug conviction, if someone goes to uh, jail for five days, they may be losing their job, uh, that kind of thing, and that was part of the proportional sentencing was that on a first-time offense for something, especially if we're talking about, um, you know, uh, shoplifting, uh, it seems like that we're getting out of that range, and so I would like to uh, I'm going to oppose it because I want to make sure we stay with the proportional sentencing, which on the first case for theft um, is uh, under $250, is a conviction 